people started realizing how dogs could help people um, goes back a few hundred years. There's some very early, early paintings of, you know, in those days, blind beggars with their, with their dog on a leash, sort of guiding them. The first guide dog training schools were established in Germany during World War I to help returning veterans who were blinded in combat. Dog Guides Canada started off in 1983. Uh, the Oakville Lions Club decided that they wanted to um, introduce an organization to Canada that trained dogs for Canadians. Since then, we've grown um, to a huge extent, uh, not just in size, but in the number of programs. This is Artie, and he's part of the foster puppy program at Dog Guides Canada. And Artie is only six weeks old, and he's getting ready to go to his foster family. Uh, and he'll stay with them for about a year, and then he'll return to the school for formal dog guide training. Once he comes back to the school, he'll be assessed to see which program he's needed for and then he'll learn certain skills that pertain to that program before he's paired with someone and changes their life forever. They're adaptable to their clients and friendly and cuddly and meet all the requirements that we need them to. His name is Jasper and he's an eight-year-old Labrador Retriever. I am a totally blind recipient of a dog guide. I've been totally blind for 30 years. Jasper is my fourth dog guide. For me, the dogs have been my sanity. They've been my stability. The dogs are almost like the keel of a sailboat. Your sailboat goes left, right, and may heel a little bit, but it's the keel that keeps you stable while my four dogs have been the keels to my life. When you have a disability, regardless of what it is, you get very tired of asking other people to do things for you. When you've got a dog guide, you can hitch up your little pony and you can go out and you can do whatever you want, when you want. A young boy asked me if I knew what I looked like. I had this Polaroid flash, just quickly, in my mind's eye and it went poof. I saw myself standing there, and at my side, there was a dog guide. And I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is because they're so special, and they, they work, and they give you a life. And Jasper is my life right now. Today, dogs are trained to assist people with many different disabilities. There are hearing dogs that alert deaf people to sounds such as alarms, doorbells, and crying babies. There are seizure dogs and mobility assist dogs, which provide help to the physically impaired. This is my, uh, my dog Titan, my working dog, my buddy. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 1990. Titan is part of the special skills uh, program, I, um, you'll notice the SSD on his collar uh, stands for Special Skills Dog. So he's been trained to help uh, various things from a mobility perspective. So one of the biggest issues I had before I had Titan was reaching for things on the floor if I dropped something and um, there was always a chance that I could fall out of my chair. I work at IBM, um, I've been working there my whole career, so 26 years at IBM and I've had Titan now for five years. He turned seven in March and uh, we travel around a lot on uh, business together which is one of the main reasons my wife wanted me to uh, look into getting it because I was traveling on my own and she was afraid of you know if I fell transferring from my chair or something like that. So you like the idea of having Titan. One of his things he does for me is he will bark on command. If I'm traveling on business and I tell the hotel, uh, you know, if you hear Titan barking, it's not because he's being bad, it's because I, I need some help. He's a big part of the family now, so um, he's around for as long as we've got him. Yeah. <laughs>